I see Cora across the dimly lit room, and suddenly, I can't breathe. She hasn't changed at all. I mean, she must have. It's been six months after all. Half a year changes a person. Breaking up with someone changes a person. Time changes you. She's talking with Jerry, holding her icy glass of coke in an elegant hand, tilting her head toward him as he tells her a joke, laughing politely, her smile tight. Jerry's sense of humor is kind of lacking. She's wearing a white tank top that shows off her pale shoulders. The slope of them draws my eyes with a strength I can't fight. Tiny beads of sweat stand out against her skin like gems, and tight black jeans, the curve of her hips evident, even in the waning light. Those perfect curves, the curves I traced with my fingertips, with my tongue. It's starting, it's already starting. She hasn't noticed me yet. I've got to go. Because if she lifts her gaze, if she sees me, even across the crowded room, it's going to be all over. It's her eyes. They're the kind of blue that a whole ocean would envy. The kind of blue that startles you. An ice blue that pierces you to the marrow of your bones, seeing into you with a clarity that makes you feel nude. She uses that piercing gaze in her job as a news reporter, commanding attention when she stares into the camera. Attention that everyone freely gives her. But the way she looked at me, once, it was different from how she looked at everyone else. And if she turns that gaze on me now, I'm done. It's twilight. A wash of violet clouds and a peach-hued sky mute the colors of the world and make everything look beautiful. Now that it's nearly dark, Sally and Jerry won't mind if I just take off. This is vacation week, and all of the people we know are camping in a ring of cabins. Every night is going to be like this, an informal get-together, talking and laughing around the fire while we drink beer and tell stories of days past. Sally told me that Cora was going to come tonight. She said that Cora told her she'd only be able to make it for this part, that she's too busy for much else, and that she couldn't camp this year. But I think that was code for Lily's camping, so I think I'll sit this one out. We've been pretty good about not crossing paths, calling ahead to see if the other was going to show up to a mutual friend's gathering, politely declining if the other one was going. We've done the dance well. And tonight's the first time in six months that I've seen her. Here's the truth of the matter. I shouldn't have come. I should have stayed in my cabin, drinking beer, reading a book, getting to bed early, but damn it, I didn't want to. I wanted to see her. Actually, no. I needed to see her. I watch her smile and nod to Jerry, and then she's moving fluidly through the press of the crowd, angling toward the drink table. I watch her move, biting my lip, feeling my cheeks flush. I watch her hips sway with each step, see how she carries her shoulders, a little high like she's thinking about something that's bothering her. In the half-light of the sunset, I can see her face in profile, that perfect curve of an aristocratic nose, high cheekbones, dark lashes. I can see her long brown hair sweeping over her freckle-dusted shoulders. I curl my right hand into a fist at my side, clutch my beer bottle tighter. It's been six months. Six long months, and I should be over her. But I'm not. Sally says I'm a martyr, and yeah, that's partially true. Cora and I broke up because I loved her and I wanted her to be happy, and I couldn't move to Spain where her job as a news reporter was taking her. It was so sudden, the I have to move to Spain for my job, come with me speech. We'd only been dating two months. We were profoundly attracted to each other, but move to Europe. I have a bookstore, a bookstore that I built from the ground up after I was fresh out of high school. It was my lifelong dream, and being a successful reporter was hers.